A young child, and even a not so young child, may not necessarily be able to make the distinction between a parent who is using a smoke stick and one who is using or smoking tobacco. And it's important that a parent make that choice. If they're going to use it in the presence of a child, they're going to take the risk of or take it upon themselves and the responsibility of having to explain why they're using it. And maybe this is a parent who formerly used more tobacco and is trying hard to, to use less tobacco and the child wants that and the parent wants that and they explain to the child that this is a way for them to, to start to use less tobacco. So you have to have, obviously be dealing with a child that's of, a, of an age where they can start to understand that sort of a thing. Otherwise, you're just modeling a smoking behavior which could be confusing to a child. As far as whether the exhaled, exhaled mist or the, uh, the mist that's produced can affect the child negatively or cause any kind of illness or disease, it's the same answer we talked about with secondhand smoke. The answer is no. There's nothing in this vapor that's harmful to a child's respiratory tract and just the same way it's not harmful to a bystander's respiratory tract who's an adult. With smoke stick, we are not dealing with tobacco in any way, shape, or form. We are not dealing with smoke the way I define smoke, which is the gaseous residue released by the burning of a tobacco leaf or any other uh, uh, substance. There is no burning taking place. There is no combustion. There is no release of, of smoke particles, which is tars, residues, ashes, uh, into the air. Therefore, how could any of that stuff wind up being impregnated into a fabric or a curtain or a rug or clothing? It can't. So, I guess I'm familiar with the new information about third-hand smoke. I think it's important that we learn to recognize that that is a risk. I don't think that smoke stick in any way, shape, or form has something to do with that risk or could create that risk or contribute to that risk. Because, once again, despite the name smoke stick, and, the, and if we decide to define this as smoking, it doesn't create smoke using the definition that I created for us. You know, I don't actually know, I'm not familiar with data regarding the amount of smoke and carbon monoxide released into the atmosphere and whether that's contributing to greenhouse gases and global warming and all that sort of thing. Well, the parts that I just showed you of the smoke stick, in fact, here's the, here's the disposable parts that we just talked about. There's this plasticky, rubber, rubbery plastic uh, plug that comes with a, a new cartridge. There's the uh, cartridge housing itself, and there's the wrapper it came in, all of which are recyclable. And so if a person has the wherewithal or the, the sensibility to simply just stick it in their pocket until they get to a place where they can recycle it, then this is not going to contribute to the litter problem that smoking uh, that cigarette butts do. So obviously we're going to have to, we have to train people to do that, but uh, it's certainly the opportunity is there to not create additional litter because there won't be any residue from half-smoked cigarettes or cigarette butts. There's recyclable cartridges. Yeah, I think it's very viable and it's very exciting. I think that it is more proof of the fact that people don't smoke because they are poorly educated or unaware of the unhealthy effects of smoking tobacco. They smoke, and I actually, this is the, I'll give you an example of a conversation I have with a patient. I will say to them, listen, I understand that you're not stupid and that you understand that, that smoking tobacco is unhealthy for you. And I believe in my heart that if there was some way that you could smoke less and, and carry on and get some of the same gratifications or pleasures or, or uh, positive benefits that you feel you're getting from smoking, that, that you would do that. People smoke because they like it. They like the effect it has on them. Whether it's the effect of the nicotine and the fact that nicotine can be uh, uh, have some positive effects on the brain in terms of calming and concentration and alertness and uh, you know, there's a reason why people want cigarette breaks. It's not just a break from work. It's because it, it, it actually helps them relax. It's a little bit of a paradoxical effect because 
technically nicotine is, is thought of as a stimulant, and yet it actually calms people down. Talk to a smoker and they'll tell you that. But what they want is the whole social activity that's involved, the oral activity that's involved. This is a very viable alternative to smoking tobacco cigarettes. And we need to appeal to the intelligence of the American people because they know that this is an un that smoking tobacco is an, and using tobacco, smokeless tobacco as well, by the way, also causes cancer. This is not necessarily a, su a substitute for smokeless tobacco, but if, if someone who uses smokeless tobacco is willing to try using an electronic cigarette and they find that to be satisfactory to them, then that's a healthier alternative for them as well. So I think like many politicians say, we need to give the American public credit for their intelligence, and any intelligent American knows that smoking tobacco is bad for them, and this ought to be a much healthier alternative.